Great singing, appreciate the singing, appreciate everyone being present here today, and especially that last song we sang about uh, Hold His Hand. It's got a real good alto part in there, and uh, those Horn Street sisters for sure can sing alto. I know that, and we got some good alto singers here, and that just really sets up the preaching uh, as we go along here. Now, of course, Zach is graduating, so he's not back in the booth back there, but when we get a chance to get my screen up there, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> I've already got the cast and all that. It's already done. Yeah. Have to do it again. Oh, he said we might have to do it again. So this is uh, this is not scripted, but it does show the value of a uh, tech guy. All righty. There. Excellent. Okay. All right. But um, it's good to have everybody here. And uh, this, this screen right here has got tools on it, and uh, it kind of reminds me of our two graduates. Of course, Paul, uh, a licensed contractor and all of that, great guy to have around. Zach, he's a tech guy, and that involves tools as well. But that's not what the lesson is about. Uh, it's about faithful service. And if you have your Bibles as a scripture reading, please turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And uh, the old expression, use it or lose it, and so I have here adapted that, are we using uh, or, should be an or, are we losing it? Are we using it or are we losing it? And that is faithfulness to God or faithful service. Now our text is the scripture that was read uh, in verses 45 and 46. But just to set up in the context, what we have here, Jesus, and it all begins back in chapter 24 and verse 3, where his disciples ask him two questions, having three different parts of those questions. And they involved a statement that Jesus said about tearing all the buildings down, not one stone would be left upon another. And so they ask him, when would these things be? That is, the tearing down of Jerusalem and all these buildings. And uh, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Well, in verses 3 all the way through uh, verse 35, he talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. And that's what would happen when all those things would be torn down, not one stone left upon another. And a big transition is in verse 36. But of that day and hour knows no one, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And when he says, but of that day and hour, he's definitely shifting gear. Uh, verse 35 said, actually verse 34, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things are fulfilled. And the word for this and these in the plural means something that is near, something that is near. That and those refer to something that is later on down the, word, down the line, something that's later. Now, how much later depends on the context. And so we know that verses 3 through 35 are not talking about, really verses 4 through 40, 35, are not talking about the end of the world, even though there's some apocalyptic language in there that sounds like it. Uh, but he is talking about the end of something, and that is, of course, the, the city of Jerusalem and Judaism, ultimately Judaism. But in verse 36, but of that day and hour, these things, this generation, close by the ones that he's talking to, but of that day and hour, nobody knows. And then he goes on to talking about this is what it's going to be like at the end of time when Jesus comes again. And uh, then he gives a little parable at the uh, beginning in verse uh, 44. But I want to begin reading in verse 42. Which of you therefore, or excuse me, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say it to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if the evil servant is, is, uh, says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, 
the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him a portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then he gives two parables in chapter 25 that have to do with being ready for that coming. And being ready is not, not, does not involve counting days or counting the signs, quote unquote. It involves doing what God says. And that first parable there with the uh, wise and foolish virgins is talking about readiness. Readiness. Five of them had their oil. Five did not, but it was too late for the five to share their oil. And it was too late for the five that didn't have any to go get oil. Readiness, being ready is having your oil ready. And then that second parable is about the talents. It's not about, be, readiness is not about counting days or it's not about measuring the signs and all that, but it's about using what God has given us while we have the opportunity because we don't know when we're going to be called to give an account for what God has given us. Thus, we have to use it or lose it. And you remember the five-talent man, he gained five more. The two-talent man, he gained two more. But the one-talent man, because he hid his talents, and talents were a sum of money, by the way, back then, he hid that in the ground. And when his master came, he had nothing to give him except the original talent that he was entrusted, with which he was entrusted. But remember, he was called a, a slothful servant, wicked and slothful servant. Because at least he could have made some, some interest off of that, but he did not. And then, at the end of the chapter, he gives that great judgment scene. And again, that judgment scene is about doing what God has said. Visiting the orphans, uh, visiting those in prison, uh, giving water to the thirsty, and those kind of things. Benevolent activities along uh, th those things there. All right, but being ready is not counting days, it's not counting signs. Faithfulness is using what God has given us that we may glorify Him in all that we do. But I just want to focus on um, verses 45 and 46. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom when his master comes, he will find him so doing. And so what does faithful service involve? What does faithful service involve? And this is for all Christians, obviously. Uh, and of course, on the night when two are graduating from the Florida School of Preaching, it's appropriate for all of us to consider this. Uh, and of course, serving God is not just for preachers. It's not just for elders. It's not just for deacons. But every Christian is to be a servant of God. And so number one, a servant of God is one who is looking. A servant who is looking. He is looking for the coming of the Lord. He is looking for service. Uh, he is looking for what he can do to be ready for that time. Now, of course, we read a whole, well, we didn't read a whole lot, but we read a, a whole bunch when we refer to all of chapters 24 and 25 in one way or another. And again, all of them are about readiness. Even in that destruction of Jerusalem, those sections right there, verses 4 through 35, it's about being ready. Remember, he'll, he'll talk about in there when you see the armies uh, surrounding the city, flee from the city and pray that it's not on the Sabbath, not in the winter, or you're not a mother who is nursing. Because all these would be difficult times to travel and to get out, uh, get out in a hurry. Uh, and so he, he tells them that. And so if you're looking and the place to look is in God's word, study God's word, know God's word, and apply God's word. And so a servant is one who is looking. And uh, even in our text here, um, blessed, uh, you, you watch for the, you know not when he's going to come in verse 42. Watch therefore for you do not, what, do not know what hour your Lord is coming. And so we need to watch and to be on the lookout for that. Notice, secondly, what does faithful service involve? It involves a Savior who is coming. 
a Savior who is coming. Now, we do not know when he's going to come. And that's clear from this passage and other passages. Uh, that thief in the night imagery is used here. It's used in 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and some other places. But, you know, the immoral activity of the, of the thief is not what's, what's being talked about here. Um, but as you know, reading up here in some of these other verses, if the good man of the house knew what hour the thief would come, then he would prepare so that it wouldn't come. And so the use of the thief here is the unexpectedness of it, the unexpectedness of it. And even though we do not know exactly when he's coming, we can expect that he will come one day. And several of you have heard this before, especially the students in class, but I, back in the old days when Scotty's Lumber and Home Building Supply was around, I worked with a fella, I worked with a couple of guys, really three guys that were World War II vets, and, you know, in some of the downtime, just sitting there chewing the fat and all. Of course, we were probably supposed to be working. I don't know. Um, but, you know, he had this saying, this one guy did. He had this saying. He learned it from being in, in World War II. We have to stay ready to keep from having to get ready. Stay ready to keep from having to get ready. In other words, if you're ready all the time, and I almost had the Boy Scouts up here. You know, that's their motto, be prepared. But I didn't. But if we're ready all the time, if we're ready for Jesus to come right now, then let him come. And if he doesn't come, that's all right. We'll keep looking. But be ready for when he comes. Now, as Christians, as you see, well, our, our third point is going to be so doing, the way to being ready is to be prepared. Like the parable of the virgins, the parable of the talents. This transitionary parable of which we're using verses 44, chapter 24, 45, and 46, readiness is not getting out a calendar, Mayan or otherwise, to count the days or to say, oh, look at this, Russia's invading Ukraine, the bear and the beast and all this. This is a sign of the times. Although I haven't heard that much lately, but that's not what being ready for the second coming is. But being ready is to look for him and be doing what God has to say. Now, we realize that since we don't know and, and all of that, but be, but be ready. Do what he says. We know that he is coming, and he's coming at a time when we least expect. In fact, when he made the transition, but of that day and hour knows no man, he says in verse 37, but as in the days of Noah, so also was the coming, uh, will the son, coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, this eating, drinking, giving in marriage, it has to do with they were just going about daily life as normal. And they didn't have a clue. They should have. Uh, Noah was pre a preacher of righteousness, and he was preaching while the ark was there preparing, Second Peter tells us. But when he went into that ark and the rain came down and the floods came up, they knew what Noah said was true. But for them, it was too late. Why? They weren't ready. Uh, one of the saddest verses in Genesis anyway, and the door was shut. And the door was shut. No getting there now. When Jesus comes again, if we're not ready, it's going to be too late to get ready. Now, if we're not Christians tonight, if we're outside the body of Christ, and I still have a third point to go, so don't get the songbook out yet. But if we're not in the body of Christ, the only way to start getting ready is to become a Christian. And that is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, John 8, 24. To repent of our sins, Luke 13, 3 and verse 5. To confess our faith before Him, to let others know that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And all this believing is not just acknowledging in my mind that he existed, but that I'm giving my life to him, that he is the Son of God, and that I'm repenting of my sins. 2 Timothy 2, 19, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows that them that are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And so that tells us that confessing that we believe that Jesus is the Christ means that I've already turned from my sins. 
that I've repented from my sin. And that's why repentance has to come before confession biblically. And then that confession, you know, even the demons could confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, Matthew 8, 28. They confessed that, but they weren't saved by no means. But we must be baptized into Christ for the mission of sins. And so for outside of Christ, that's how we ready ourselves. And once we're in Christ, our sins are forgiven. There's nothing between us, between us and God, but fellowship as long as we continue to walk in the light as he is in the light. Then if he comes, it won't matter. We'll be ready. And so what does faithful service involve? It involves a servant who is looking, a savior who is coming, and finally, a standard that is abiding a standard that is abiding. Again, going back to verse 46, that blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Doing God's will has always been the standard. I mentioned Noah in uh, chapter 24, 38 and 39. And we're studying the book of Genesis on Wednesday nights here at South Florida Avenue. And a couple of weeks ago, we just got through the flood. But remember, when Noah was told to build that ark, he was given the dimensions. He was given the, um, the kind of wood to use and so forth. But it says, thus did Noah according to all that God had commanded him. And so he was counted faithful. And before that, Cain and Abel, remember those sacrifices? Remember the Lord had respect in Genesis 4, had respect unto Cain's sacrifice. Or no, Abel's sacrifice, but no respect for Cain's sacrifice. The Hebrews writer in Hebrews 11 verse 4 said, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, and really all of that, Hebrews chapter 11, is doing what God says. That's, what, that's what, how faith is defined uh, in, that, in that passage. But doing God's will has always been the standard. In fact, as he says here, just in this right here, blessed is he whom when his Lord comes, he finds so doing. And the talents, they were doing what they could to, to handle those talents and to bring honor and glory to their master, to the Lord. And even the virgins, they were ready to do, and when it came time for doing, they had the oil to do what they were supposed to do because they were ready. And so that has been the standard that God has always given. And so tonight as we look at our faithful service to God, yes, it applies to Florida School of Preaching graduates, but also to every single one of us here tonight. Are we faithful servants of God? Have we obeyed the gospel in the past? Are we living the gospel in the present? If the Lord were to come right now, would he find us, as verse 46 says, so doing his will? And if not, tonight's a perfect chance, perfect opportunity to make it right so that we are faithful. Whether that means we need to come in humble obedience to the Lord and be baptized into Christ, or if we need to come and study some more about that, we're not too sure about that. We hear all kinds of things in the religious world, and we do, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they don't all teach the Bible, even though they claim to. And the only way to know whether someone who claims to teach the Bible is teaching the Bible is to examine the Bible and study the Scripture. So it may be there's some here that want to do that even more. We'd be happy to assist. And if you've been baptized in the past but have not been living faithfully, have not been so doing, maybe like those foolish virgins, you do not have the oil to do God's will when the opportunity comes. Or it might be that you are like that one talent man, that you have buried what God has given you, and rather than glorifying him with what, we, what he has blessed us with, we have it stuck in the ground. Remember the old song, don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Put it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. And so perhaps there's some here tonight who have not been letting their light shine as, the, as they know they should and could. But whatever the case, the good news, God is here. He will take us 
He will forgive us of our sins if we repent, if we're baptized into Him, and if we're already Christians, if we just repent, He will restore us and remember our sins no more. And so tonight, if you are subject to the Lord's invitation, we'd invite you to come as we stand and sing this song.